Dumb Husky and His White Cat She's Un. Chapter 46 This Venerable One Wakes Up When he woke up, Moran found himself still inside the Holy Weapon Arsenal. He seemed to have slept for a long time, but when he opened his eyes, he found that not much time had passed. It even seemed things had happened in a mere blink of an eye. He doesn't know if it was because the spell had been successfully broken, but when he woke up, he found himself lying on the ground, unharmed. The ghastly wounds nor the dripping blood, they had not left a mark on his body. It was like a mere nightmare. Moran was surprised and delighted, and then he looked at Chimei, who had also passed out at some point, but was also unharmed. Could it be that after passing Gushin Shanggong's trial, Gushin not only removed the illusion but also restored the wounds they had sustained in the illusion? Although, on reflection, Gushin Shanggong was not trying to harm anyone, which is what the trial was all about, Moran just didn't feel real, or even alive afterwards. Of the four men, he was the first to wake up. Then came Shimei, and when Shimei slowly lifted her eyelashes, Moran was overjoyed and said, Shimei, we're fine, we're fine, look at me. Shimei's eyes were in a trance for a moment before they cleared, and his eyes widened suddenly, A ran you. Before he could finish his sentence, he was hugged tightly by Moran. Shimei was stunned, but patted him gently on the shoulder, What's wrong with you? I'm sorry I put you through so much. Shimei said blankly, it wasn't really anything, I just had a dream. Moran said, but the pain feels so real. Shimei, what pain? At that moment, Shuemeng also woke up and, not knowing what he had dreamt, he cried out, insolent fool. How dare you molest me, while sitting up violently. Seeing that he was awake, Shimei went over and said, young master. Shuemeng thought he was still in a dream. Mo Ran was in a very good mood and looked softly to Shue Meng, smiling as he told him what had happened. So it was a dream. Here I thought. Shue Meng coughed lightly to cover up his embarrassment and was shocked to find that Chu Wanning who is the most powerful, was still asleep and had not woken up yet. Astonished he asked, how come Shi Zun hasn't woken up yet? They walked over and examined Chu Wanning's wound. Since Chu Wanning had been already wounded before they were thrown in the illusion. According to Gushin Shanggong's design, only the damage sustained during the illusion would be recovered so Chu Wanning's shoulder was still soaked in blood and was alarming to see. Mo Ran sighed and said, let's wait a little longer and see. It took about an incense stick worth of time before Chu Wanning finally woke up. He slowly opened his phoenix eyes, his gaze empty and cold when he first awoke, as if a white blanket of snow had fallen on them. It was a long time before he rolled his eyes and his gaze fell on Mo Ran. But like Shue Meng, he seemed to be still half asleep as his gaze fell on Mo Ran. He slowly reached out his hand and said in a muffled voice, You. Mo Ran said, She's on. At the sound of his call, Chu Wanning's hand froze in mid-air, his pale face seemed to take on a hint of red, and his eyes suddenly brightened, N. She's on. Shue Meng swooped in and pushed Mo Ran aside and took Chu Wanning's hand, How are you Suzun? Are you feeling better? You took so long to wake up, I was worried sick. Chu Wanning saw Shue Meng and stared at him, then the mist in his gaze gradually lifted. A closer look at Mo Ran reveals that although he is looking at him, he is holding Shi Mei's hand tightly, and have not let go of it for a moment. Thus, Chu Wanning then woke up completely, his expression clearing but turning cold, like a fish in a dry pond dying thoroughly. Shi Mei said with concern, Shi Zun, are you alright? Does your shoulder hurt? Chu Wanning said calmly, I'm fine, it doesn't hurt. He stood up slowly with the help of Shue Meng. Mo Ran wondered for a moment why Chu Wanning, who had injured his shoulder, was getting up with a weak gait, as if he had injured his foot. Mo Ran thought that Chu Wanning did not know what had just happened in the vision and briefly narrated it again. Shi Mei felt something was wrong when he heard it just now, and when he heard it again. 
he felt even more strange and couldn't help but say, Aran, you said I saved you. Right. Shimei was quiet for a moment and then said slowly, but I was dreaming the whole time, and I didn't wake up. Moran was shocked, but then laughed, you're kidding. Shimei said, I'm not joking, I dreamed. I dreamed of my parents when they were alive. The dream was so real that I didn't seem to be able to leave them behind, I didn't want to. Before he could finish his sentence, Chu Wanning said lightly, that's not surprising. Perhaps Gushin's illusion erased the memory of the time you saved him. Anyway, neither I nor Shuemeng saved him, so if he says you did it then you did. Shimei. Or what else? Does Gushin have a way of swapping people's soul? Chu Wanning said coldly. He had wanted to tell Mo Ran the truth, and had hoped that Mo Ran would realize that the person in the illusion was not Shimei, but himself, who had swapped consciousness with Shimei. But Mo Ran's final confession to Shimei is too embarrassing for Chu Wanning. When he woke up, he looked into Mo Ran's dark, shining eyes. For a moment, Chu Wanning felt that perhaps in Mo Ran's heart, he did care for him even a little. Such a humble expectation was also a weak thought that he dared to pry out quietly after so long. But it was all in his head. The blood he has shed, the wounds he has sustained, Mo Ran will not know, nor does he need to know. He was not stupid, and although he did not say so, he could already feel how much Mo Ran cherished that gentle and beautiful person. Why would Mo Ran look at him when he's like the puppet standing in the corner gathering dust? When he heard Mo Ran's own words, I've always like you, Chu Wanning felt like he had lost completely. To Mo Ran, the hug while in the illusion was a charity bestowed by Shimei. But Mo Ran will never know that the hug was actually him bestowing charity upon another pitiful soul. Chu Wanning never thought Mo Ran would like him, so he tried very hard to hold back his feelings, never trying to force his hand, never cause him any disturbance, never touch him casually. That reckless affection and passionate infatuation, only grow on the soil of youth. When he was young, he too wished for someone to keep him company, to drink under the moon with, but he waited and waited, but that person never came. As the days passed, his reputation and status within the cultivation world grew, and everyone looked up to him in admiration. However, his reputation of being unapproachable also grew. Later he learned to accept both the admiration and the insensitivities. It was like he was hiding in a cocoon, and time was continuously spinning silk around his cocoon. At first, he could still see a little light seeping in through the cocoon, but year by year, as the silk grew and the cocoon grew thicker and thicker until he could no longer see the light. Inside the cocoon there is only himself, and the darkness. He doesn't believe in love, he didn't believe in chance encounter and he certainly didn't want to go chase after anything. What would he do if he had gone through all the trouble of biting open his cocoon and stumbling out, but there was no one waiting for him outside? Although he loves Mo Ran, this man is too young, too far out of reach, and too fiery for Chu Wanning to approach, fearing that one day he will be burned to ashes by such a flame. So, he had taken every path of retreat there was. He didn't know what he had done wrong. What he had done that even such a small daydream should be drowned by cold rainstorm. Shizun, look over there. Shuemeng's cry of alarm brought Chu Wanning back to the present, and he followed it to see the molten lava tumbling out of the smelting pool once again. However, the tree spirit's eyes were still rolled back and it is clear that it's not in its right mind. In its hands, it held the silvery sword of Gushin Shanggong. Chu Wanning order, run. Quickly. Without him repeating himself a second time, the disciples immediately raced towards the exit. The manipulated tree spirit raised its head towards the sky and shrieked, the iron chains all over its body shaking and clanking. No one spoke but all four of them heard a voice at the same time. Stop them. Not a single one shall escape. Shuemeng cried in dismally, someone is talking in my ears. Chu Wanning said, ignore it. It's Zaxen Liu's technique, temptation of the heart. 
just focus on escaping. As he said this, the others remembered that Zakes and Lou had reminded them, when he was sober, that the temptation of the heart technique used the greed and desire in a person's heart as a lure to make them kill each other. Sure enough, the voice in Chu Wanning's ear hissed, Chu Wanning, don't you ever get tired? Esteemed Zongxi, you hung of the night sky. Such a character, but he can only secretly and sneakily love his own disciple. You give so much to him but he took all of it for granted. He never has eyes for you, he only likes that gentle and beautiful shikshin of his. How pitiful you are. Chu Wanning's face was steely dark as he ignored the voice in his ears and continued to run towards the exit. Come to my side, take this ancient sword, kill Shimei, and there will be no one between you. Come to my side and I will help you to get what you want and make the one you love fall in love with you. Come to my side. Chu Wanning said angrily, get out of here. The others had apparently heard the voice's individual offers and although their pace had slowed, they were able to resist the temptation. As they drew closer to the exit, Zakes and Lu seemed to grow more frantic, the hissing in their ears almost distorted. Think it through. Once you are out of this door, there will never be another chance. The voices within everyone's ear were all different, whining mournfully. Chu Wanning, Chu Wanning, are you really going to be alone for the rest of your life? Mo Wiyu, I am the only one in the world who knows where the resurrection pill is. Come to my side and I will tell you. Shi Ming Jing, I know your deepest desires and only I can help you. Shui Meng, the holy weapon you have chosen is a fake, only the last weapon made by Gushin Shang Gong remains, come back and this ancient sword will belong to you. Don't you want to be the best of the best? Shui Meng. Mo Ran suddenly realizes that his cousin, who was running beside him, is nowhere to be seen. When he turned his head, he saw Shui Meng's step slowing down and eventually stopping to look back at the silver blue sword floating in the pool. Mo Ran's heart flutters. He knew how deep Shui Meng's obsession with the holy weapon ran. The boy must have been devastated to learn that the weapon he had been given was a fake. Zakes and Lu could not have done better to tempt him with the ancient sword. Shui Meng, don't believe him. Don't go there. She may also said, young master, come on. We're almost at the exit. Shui Meng looked back at them blankly, but the voice echoing in his ears became more and more compelling, they are jealous of you and do not want you to get your hands on the holy weapon. Think of Mo Wiyu, he has already acquired his weapon. He'd rather that you get nothing. The two of you are brothers but if you are inferior to him, then the honored leader position of Shi's Hung Peak will naturally fall to him. Shui Meng muttered, shut up. In front of him, Mo Ran seemed to be shouting at him anxiously, but he couldn't hear him clearly and just kept clutching his head and repeating, shut up. You shut up. Shui Ziming, there are already no more weapons suitable for you at the holy weapon arsenal. If you miss out on the ancient sword, you will only be able to submit yourself in servitude to Mo Wiyu in the future. When the time comes, he will be your master before whom you will kneel and be at his mercy. What hesitation do you have to come over here and let me give you the sword? Shui Meng. Young master. Shui Meng suddenly stopped struggling and when his eyes snapped open, they were actually crimson. Come to my side. You are the darling of the heavens, you are worthy to lead an army of millions. Chu Wanning said in a stern voice, Shui Meng. Come. Only when you've become the leader of Shi's Hung Peak will the lower cultivation world know peace. Think of those who are suffering, think of all the injustice you all suffered. Before he knows it, Shui Meng is at the edge of the boiling smelting pool, where the spirit of Zakes and Lu is holding Gush and Shang Gong's ancient sword, the tree spirit's pupils turned up with bloodshot white eyes. Very good. Take this sword and go stop them all. Shui Meng slowly raised his hand and trembled as he accepted the silver blue sacred sword. Kill them. Kill Mo Wiyu. Go. Ah. Shui Meng pulled out the long sword abruptly. He swung backhanded and struck swiftly, 
the handsome visage of the darling of the heavens reflected brilliantly in the spiritual aura of the ancient sword and illuminated by the shine of the blade, his eyes were clearer and brighter than ever before and not at all inundated with bloodlust. Instead of stabbing at Mo Ran, the sword was pointed straight at Zaxan Lu itself, penetrating through its abdomen. In an instant, the earth trembled and the ancient willows shook. The spell was broken and the side of the holy weapon arsenal began to crack and collapse. Shwemen breathes heavily as he breaks free of the compulsion with all his might. He stares at Zaxan Lu, his young face filled with youthful determination. The pride and innocence in those burning eyes could easily be seen. The phoenix's chick wasn't only made of martial principles. Don't try to confuse me and don't even think about harming anyone else. Shwemeng panted as he finished speaking as he wrenched out the long sword. Zaxan Lu burst into a foul-smelling burst of blood, and as he died, his consciousness returned to his body, and his hostility suddenly died away. Clutching his chest, he arduously steadied his shaky body, raised his face and opened his mouth and while no sound could be heard, the shape of his lips was clearly discernible. Thank you for stopping me. Zaxan Liu's original body was a spirit of ancient times, equal in power with the ancient sword. When the two clashed, both sides suffered a great loss. The ancient sword in Shui Meng's hand also lost its spiritual aura, dimming and dulled. And at the same time, the tree spirit of a million years dissipated its form. In an instant, millions of sparkles scattered into the waters. Like fireflies, they dance and circled around them, fluttering and flowing with bright golden shimmers until finally they faded, never to be seen again. She may said, young master, come here quick. This place is going to collapse. The earth trembles, they really couldn't stay long. Shuemeng looked back and gave the holy weapon arsenal one final look. Then he tossed the destroyed ancient sword, leaving it behind. As he turned back, bricks and shingles caved in like the crash of an avalanche. End chapter Dumb Husky and his white cat Shizun Chapter 47 this venerable one feels like something is off. Chu Wanning was injured and the other three were also exhausted. So after running into the tunnel outside the holy weapon arsenal, Chu Wanning told them to them to rest for a bit. For a while no one spoke, each standing or sitting while examining their own wounds or those of others, recuperating their strength. Shui Meng is the only one who is lost in thought, his head drooping, seemingly lost in thought. Mo Ran murmured, Shui Meng. Shui Meng pays no attention to anyone, he only walks stiffly to stand before Chu Wanning, tilts his head, and opens his mouth with a broken voice. She's un. Chu Wanning looked at him and wanted to lift his hand to touch his unruly hair, but he resisted. Is the holy weapon I picked earlier a fake? Chu Wanning did not speak. Shui Meng's eyes were even redden and his eyes grew bloodshot. If it wasn't for his pride and stubbornness, he would have shed tears at once. Does this mean I'll never be able to have a holy weapon? Chu Wanning closed his eyes with a sigh. The corridor is quiet, and the only sound heard is Chu Wanning's cool, clear voice. Silly child. With a sigh of relief and helplessness, the last vestiges of Shui Meng's rationality crumbles. Unable to endure it any longer, he threw himself into Chu Wanning's arm and cried his heart out. She's un. She's un. Failing to obtain a Jinjinj Lake holy weapon is to miss out on the chance to be at the top of the cultivation world. This is something that everyone knows very well. Mortals have limited spiritual power, and without the help of holy weapons, they are no more than a body of flesh and blood. The young masters of the sex in the upper cultivation realm have more or less inherited holy weapon from their ancestors, and even though they are not fully attuned to their own spiritual powers, they are still very powerful. Only Shui Meng couldn't, since Shui Zhenyang and his brothers started from the scratch and never received a holy weapon from Jinjinj Lake. Thus, in choosing to wield the ancient sword against Zaxan Lu in mutual destruction, he was choosing to give up on his ambitions to rise above all. Chu Wanning didn't ask any questions and said nothing more, 
hugging Shuemeng who was crying loudly in his arms, while stroking his hair. Shuemeng had been spoiled since he was a child and had never suffered any grievances, so he had never cried for as long as he could remember. Yet at this moment, tears streaked down his young face, and his every word came out broken, like the holy weapon he was no longer destined to possess, like a dream of a hero he had thought was within his grasp, all of it had shattered. Shuemeng, Chu Wanning held the disciple in his arms and comforted him. For a moment, Mo Ran only had time to see his soft eyelashes dropping and the soft light beneath them. Then the waves picked up, ruffling his hair and garments, and he could no longer clearly see Chu Wanning's face in the darkness. He just heard him say, Don't cry, you're already great. His voice wasn't quite gentle, but the words that come out of Chu Wanning's mouth could not be softer. In the corridor, everyone became silent as each of them became occupied with their own thoughts. Mo Ran leaned against the cold wall, watching Chu Wanning embracing Shui Meng and patting his shoulder, and suddenly felt bad. This journey to Jinjinj Lake. They came fresh and optimistic, but left laden with wounds. Shui Meng had been the darling of the heavens for 15 years, well regarded and high spirited but in the span of one day, his world collapsed. From now on, he would spend his long lifetime to forget these 15 years of advanced glory. As they ran out of the holy weapon arsenal, they saw Zakes and Lu slowly collapsing in the water, like an exhausted ancient giant in the wilderness, like the dying of the sun. The remaining mer people on the ground fled in disbelief. The million years old weapon arsenal was destroyed in an instant. The fall of the sacred tree sent a tidal wave through the Jinjinj Lake, and in front of the huge vortex, the Mer people transformed themselves back into their massive bodies in an attempt to withstand the waves. In the Jinjinj Lake, the scales and armor tossed and the fish and dragons leapt, leaving little room for the mortals to stand. Mo Ran shouted, We can't get out this way. As he spoke, a thick dragon's tail slapped at him, and Mo Ran dodged quickly before he narrowly escaped. At that moment, a black pale dragon came sweeping up, its form larger than the rest of the dragon, its black scaly armor glowing with a cold golden glow. Mo Ran exclaimed, Wan Jiao. Wan Jiao let out a loud roar, he was a mute dragon but suddenly he could now speak, his voice was like a bell and he shouted, Climb on my back. With the destructions of Zakes and Lu, Jinjinj Lake is soon to follow. Hurry, I will get you out. Having no other choice, they could not care less whether Wan Jiao was a friend or foe, so they did as they were told. Wan Jiao carried the four of them through the frightening tossing waves, the water splitting in his wake. Hold on tight. As soon as the words left his mouth, the old dragon suddenly burst out of the water and soared into the sky. Mo Ran and the others felt a thousand currents pounding in their faces, the water like a thousand horses and armies stampeding through their bones and lungs. They couldn't open their eyes or breathe, so they clutched the dragons back with both hands and used all their strength to keep from being thrown back into the lake. By the time they could finally open their eyes, they were already on top of Jinjinj Lake soaring through the clouds at the summit of Dawning Peak. The water vapor spurts turned into a million points of luminescence, scattering from the mirror-like scales of the huge dragon, and in an instant the smoke and clouds were like mist, and the mist became a rainbow. Wan Jiao raised his head in a roar as color washed over the land. Mo Ran heard Shui Meng's voice coming from behind him against the fierce wind, full of excitement. He was really young after all, easily distracted from his sorrows. Oh heavens I'm flying! On a dragon. Wan Jiao circled above Dawning Peak, gradually shrinking in size and slowly swooping down so that by the time he comes to rest on the banks of Jinjinj Lake, he is less than half his original size and does not crush too much of the surrounding rock and grass. He huddled in place and quietly allowed Mo Ran and the rest to get off the dragon's back. When they looked back at Jinjinj Lake, they saw the 10,000 feet of ice melting away and the waves rising up to break the ice. By now the morning had dawned and the sun was shining brightly in the east. She may suddenly exclaimed, look at those dragons in the lake. The tossing and twisting dragons undulate with the surging waves, gradually cease to move, 
then crumble one by one, turning into bits of charred ash as one black chess piece after another rises from the lake and gathers in mid-air. Mo Ran murmured, Zhenlong chess formation. Everything in the lake, from the sea dragons to Zaxin Lu itself was under the control of Zhenlong chess formation. All of it was a match set up by someone hiding in the shadows. Mo Ran suddenly shuddered. He realized that something was not right in this world he had returned to. Certain things happened earlier than they should have for no apparent reason. In his previous life, when he was 16 years old, there was absolutely no one could command the Zhenlong chess formation to this extent. Shui Meng cried, Wan Jiao. Mo Ran looked back and saw Wan Jiao lying motionless, no black pieces had emerged from him, but he looked very weak, the pupils of his eyes half closed. Well done, it is far preferable for our exalted god Gushin's Jinjinj Lake to be destroyed than to fall into the hands of the evil one. With these words, he suddenly emanated a golden light all over his body, and when the light dissipated, he turned into the form of a smaller human being. It's you. Mo Ran and Shui Meng spoke almost simultaneously. The Wan Jiao before them was the very same white-haired elderly mare man who guided them to the holy weapon arsenal. Wan Jiao looked up, and there was a glint of guilt in his eyes. It is me. Shui Meng was shocked, you, why did you lead us to holy weapon arsenal? Are you trying to save us or harm us? If you are harming us, why are you sending us ashore? Wan Jiao lowered his eyes and said hoarsely, please accept my apologies. The circumstance is such that there's nothing I can do. The fake Gushin's own cultivation was insufficient and he was relying on Zaxin Liu's spiritual power to wield the forbidden technique Yu. The only way to break the spell was to overcome Zaxin Liu. I had no choice but to put my hope in the four of you. Chu Wanning shook his head and walked over to him. He then began channeling spiritual energy to heal his injuries. Wan Jiao let out a long sigh, Dea Zhang is kind, but it is not necessary. I, like all the other creatures of the lake, have reached the end of my life. We have been living off Zaxin Liu's spiritual energy. Now that it has fallen, my life will be over soon. Chu Wanning. Wan Jiao continued, the order of life and death cannot be forced. I have fulfilled my wish to see the nightmare of Jinchinj Lake broken before I die. Although, I am terribly sorry for having involved you four in danger. Chu Wanning said, no matter. Do you know who the man who falsely impersonated Gushin is and what he wants? Wan Jiao replied, I don't know who he really is. But I think his goal is to obtain Zaxin Liu's power in order to command the three forbidden techniques. Chu Wanning mused, the spiritual energy required to perform the forbidden arts is of incredible amount. If he had the help of the ancient tree spirit, he will indeed get twice the result with half the effort. Yes, that's person said the same. He said that ancient spirits are powerful, but extremely difficult to find. The only one he found from the ancient records was Zaxin Lu. He appeared fairly recently and since he took control of Jinjinj Lake, he has been using the power of Zaxin Lu to practice the forbidden techniques of rebirth and the Zhenlong chess formation, Wan Jiao said, sighing, his eyes somewhat vacant and dull. Mo Ran's heart thudded. Sure enough, this trip to Jinjinj Lake was very different from the one in his past life, and all of these changes happened only a short time ago. What went wrong to change the course of everything? He didn't have the strength to manipulate living creatures, so he killed countless creatures in the lake and tried to control the dead instead. When he managed that, he had massacred almost all the creatures in the lake and turned them into chess pieces. He left only a few alive to experiment with. I was one of them. Mo Ran asked, when you come out of the water to meet me, were you under the manipulation of the fake Gushin? No Wan Jiao slowly closed his eyes. He can manipulate others, the fox demons and even Zaxin Lu but he cannot control me. I am a spiritual beast tamed by Gushin Shang Gong at the creation of the world. A million years ago, when I submitted to being his steed, I was branded by his seal, to be loyal to one master only in life and in death. Then why did you? 
it was an act. I had no choice. Wan Jiao sighed, although the intruder did not have complete control over me, the spell of Gushan Shang Gong has been in place for millions of years and is not as effective as it was then. I was still partly under the influence of the fake Gushan. When you saw me, I was mute because my voice had been completely manipulated by that man. It was only when his spell was broken that I was able to speak again. Mo Ran asks, does the fake Gushan know you were pretending? I don't think he knows. Wan Jiao looked at Mo Ran and said, he had planned to take your spiritual core to extend Zakes and Liu's life but he didn't anticipate me bringing you four back to the holy weapon arsenal to destroy the ancient willow, and took no precautions against my interference. Chu Wanning suddenly said, perhaps it's not that he was not wary of you but rather that he did not have the strength to spare for such. What do you mean by that, Dea Zhang? Chu Wanning said, I have a vague feeling that the fake Gushin is up to something else. End chapter. Dumb Husky and his white cat Shizun. Chapter 48. This Venerable One's Old Dragon. Mo Ran couldn't help but agree with what he said. Shizun is right. There was a faint aura about fake Gushin that Mo Ran thought was his own imaginations, but since Chu Wanning felt it too, the chances of it being an illusion were very slim. The scent of a dead body. This Gushin Shang Gong is actually not himself and he is not even, in fact, a living person. In other words, the person behind the scenes only took a corpse and used it as a puppet for himself, disguised as the god of 10,000 weapons. He didn't even show up in person. As he pondered, a low chuckle came out at the side of Jinjinj Lake. Immediately afterwards, a pale body came out like a sharp arrow, and the fake Gushin Shang Gong leapt into the air, but his appearance was now horrific, his skin crumpled together as if a snake was shedding its skin or a silkworm was breaking out of its cocoon. You hang of the night sky, Baidu Immortal. Chu Zongxi, you really live up to your reputation. False Gushin hangs above the shimmering lake, its painted face seemingly twisted into a near distorted smile. A man of your stature, why did the Rufeng sect couldn't keep you back then? Chu Wanning said in a cold voice, Who are you really? You don't have to know just who I am. False Gushin said, I will not let you know who I am either. Think of me as a man who died long ago and has risen again from hell to seek the life of all of you so-called decent people. Wan Jiao said sternly, You are shameless. Zaxin Lu has been destroyed, and without the power of the sacred wood, you will not be able to perform the forbidden spell and do anything anymore. Fake Gushin laughed coldly, you old loach, you're dying and you're still here to spoil my day. You have no place to talk here, so get lost. Chu Wanning suddenly said, your excellency is a Beza, does that mean you have a say in the matter? The so-called Beza, as the name implies, are the most special type of pieces in the game of Zhenlong. When the practitioner finds a newly dead corpse and pours a part of his soul into it, that part of the soul merges with the corpse to form a Beza or white child, white as a jade. White child is different from the ordinary purely controlled black child. In other words, Beza is actually a stand-in for the caster. They are not as powerful as the original but they can think and act on their own, and what they see and hear can be empathized with the original. Fake Gushin whose identity is revealed, is applauding, and laughing, yes, yes, yes. After these three yes es, the fake Gushin's face became more and more distorted, as if his own spell was running out and he could not maintain the appearance of the white child, gradually revealing the original form of the body he occupied. Chu Wanning, don't be presumptuous. You think stopping me today will help? Even if Zaxin Lu is destroyed, my body can still go and find another source of spiritual power. You, on the other hand, are the one. As he spoke, his gradually clouding eyes suddenly passed Chu Wanning. Maliciously and landed on Mo Ran. And was suddenly shocked. He continued with a mocking tone, If you think I am the only one in the world who knows the three forbidden arts, then I am afraid you will not live long. Chu Wanning's long eyebrows lowered and he said sternly, what do you mean by that? 
However, the fake Gushin suddenly stopped talking, and after a short pause, he suddenly burst into fishy fragments, and a piece as white as jade burst out of him, swirling against the light in mid-air and falling into the thin waves of Jinjinj Lake with a thud. It seems that the fake Gushin in the shadows has finally run out of steam after losing Zakes and Liu's assistance. At the same time, Wan Jiao, who had survived almost as long as Zakes and Liu, stumbled twice and fell back to the ground with a thud, whispering, Ah! Shui Meng exclaims, Wan Jiao. Mo Ran also called out, Wan Jiao. Wan Jiao's lips were bloodless as the four men rushed to the Chiao. He looks at them, his throat as hoarse as a crow at sunset. You must never, never, never believe the nonsense of the man who spoke. His words are far more false, far more false than true. Shi Mei's eyebrows were full of concern and sadness as he said in a warm voice, Senior, stop talking, I will heal you. No, it is not necessary. What your master could not do, you can't even more. Wan Jiao coughed violently several times, then gasped, Over the years, many people have come to Jinjinj Lake for holy weapons. However, since the treacherous evil entered the pool, Zakes and Lu has destroyed tens of thousands of blades as he did not want the sacred objects left behind by his master to be ill-used. The only thing left behind is a willow vine of equal strength, a weapon of the gods. At the mention of this point, Shui Meng looks even more gloomy, pursing his lips and remaining silent. Lu Teng, Lu Teng has returned to this trail leader. Wan Jiao looked. At Mo Ran, at that time, at the surface of lake, and I told you that if you were evil in the past then it can't be helped. I just hope that you will be good in the future, but in fact, you should follow after of your master. Holy weapons should only be owned by a kind-hearted person. So, I hope you can. You can. Seeing that he was already struggling to speak, Moran stopped his words and said, Don't worry, senior, I understand. The Jiaren muttered, that's good, that's good. Then I, I'm relieved. He looked up at the sky, his lips trembling slightly. It is said that in Jinjinj Lake when one seeks for a weapon and that underwater spirits and monsters will make demands. In the old days, most of those demands used to be to test the character of the requester, however occasionally there are exceptions. Wan Jiao's voice gradually weakened, and his eyes seemed to fade away like a revolving lantern of thousands of years. I kept my promise to my master to guard Jinjinj Lake after his departure, and will not leave. I never expected that this duty would span millions of years, the scenery of mountains and rivers I saw when I was young, it seems I would never see it again for the rest of my life. He slowly turned his head and looked at Mo Ran imploringly, his old eyes gleaming warm and moist. At that moment, Mo Ran suddenly knew what he was going to say. Sure enough, Wan Jiao said softly, Little cultivator, the plum blossoms on the hillside are bright all year round and I used to love them when I was a child. Mo Ran just wanted to say, All right, I'll do it for you. But before he could even say anything, the light in Wan Jiao's golden brown eyes suddenly went out. Jiangnan has nothing to offer but the gift of spring. Snow-capped mountains loom in the distance, the lake is golden, and the red light of the rising sun spreads into the pool, breaking into dots of poignant scarlet in the churning waves. Wan Jiao is dead. He was once one of the first great dragons of creation, who once stirred the heavens and the earth, who called the wind and the rain, and who bowed down and carried the king on his travels. It was said that he had a curse on him and was forbidden to turn his back on his old master. But they do not know that it wasn't a curse at all. That he honored the Gushin Shanggong and promised to do so for many years. There are very few beings in the world who remember the creation of the world. Wan Jiao knew that the real Gushin Shanggong was of mixed demon blood, but that his mother had been forced by demons and so it wasn't her choice. Gushin Shanggong hated the demons and came under Heavenly Emperor Fuxi's command, and with his own demonic blood, he created the first sword in heaven and earth for heavenly emperor Fuxi. 
Gushin Shanggong helped Heavenly Emperor Fuxi to eliminate the demon invaders and to sweep the Kyushu. However, after the reunification of Heaven and Earth, Heavenly Emperor Fuxi became suspicious of Gushin Shanggong because of his half-demon blood. Gushin Shanggong was not ignorant of it, and after a hundred years, he asked leave for himself from the Divine Realm and come to the mortal world. Along the way, he saw the suffering of all beings and the killing by weapons, and felt remorseful that he should not have created the swords. So, he collected all the weapons he had left behind and stored them in the weapon arsenal at Jinchinj Lake, where he planted the willows Aixin Lu and told the creatures in the lake that anyone seeking a sword must be kind-hearted to be worthy of a holy weapon. Now, Gushin Shanggong is no longer around and Wanjiao is dead. Under Jinchinj Lake, there is no more holy weapon, no more Jiao Ren, all the sins and penances, all the distortions and obsessions, all had gone up in smoke with the collapse of Zaxin Lu. For a while, no one spoke, and in the midst of the heavy snowfall, the four bright red monoliths on the side of Jinchinj Lake, are still as peaceful and calm on the surface as the first time they had seen it. It showed no sign of the havoc and suffering that had taken place underwater. Just as when they first climbed Donning Peak, they had no idea that behind the proposed trail lay a tale of gore and blood. Moran looks up at the sky and above the cliff, a lone eagle flies over the snow. He suddenly thought, in his previous life, Wanjiao had given him the Buleden Gui, which was powerful, but in this life the Buleden Gui he had seen was only a fake, and the one that really belonged to him had probably been destroyed by Zaxin Lu. He would probably never see Buleden Gui in this life. After a while, he inexplicably thought again. In that year, he came to Jinchinj Lake to seek a sword. That day, Wanjiao emerged from the water, with golden eyes looking at him gently and kindly, and then said to him, The plum blossoms on the mountainside are blooming beautifully. Can you pick one and give it to me? Moran closes his eyes and gently covers his eyelids with his arms. In the previous life, I didn't know what was going on under the lake, so I thought that Wanjiao was just being elegant. It has been many days since they returned to Shisheng Peak. Chu Wanning's shoulder was badly injured and all three young men were exhausted, so they rested for many days in Dai City before heading back to Shuzhong. Shui Meng did not tell Shui Zhenyang and Madame Wang about his failed quest for a holy weapon. As proud as he was, whether his parents were disappointed or comforted, it would only feel like salt being poured to an open wound. Chu Wanning, knowing the truth of his heart, could not bear it. So, he buried himself in scrolls all day long, hoping to find another way to get a holy weapon for Shui Meng. Or, if there are other ways in the world that can make mortals match the weapons of the gods. Besides there are many more matters to think about such as who is the fake Gushin and where is he now. What is the meaning of the last words of the fake Gushin's white child before he destroyed himself up? There is so much to worry about that the candlelight in the Red Lotus Pavilion Library shines day and night. The copper kettle drips and the various bamboo scrolls are spread out on the floor. In the middle of these is Chu Wanning's s slightly tired face. Yu Heng, your shoulder still hurts, don't take any chances. Shui. Zhen Yang holding a cup of hot tea while sitting next to him chattered. Tan Lang Elder is good at medicine. If you have time, ask him to take a look at you. It's alright, it's already healed, was the reply he received. Shui Zhen Yang Tsked, no, no. No, look at you, you haven't looked good since you got back. Nine out of ten people who see you say you look like you're going to pass out at any moment. I think that wound is not simple, maybe there's a poison or something in it, you'd better be careful. Chu Wanning lifted his eyes, I look like I'm going to pass out, he paused and sneered, who said that? Shui Zhenyang tried to pacify him. You hung. Don't always treat yourself like you're made of steel and treat others like they're made of paper. Chu Wanning said, I know what I'm talking about. Shui Zhenyang muttered silently which sounded like you know shit. Fortunately, Chu Wanning was so focused on his book that he did not hear those mutterings. After talking for a while, 
Shui Zhenyang saw that it was getting late and stood up, ready to go back to his wife. Before he left, he also reminded Chu Wanning, Yu Han, get some rest. If Shui Meng finds out about your behavior, he will feel guilty. Chu Wanning simply ignored him. Shui Zhenyang, a little embarrassed at having hit a cold nail, scratched his head and walked away. Chu Wanning drank the medicine and returned to the case to continue his examination of the dossier. He felt himself getting dizzy so he supported his forehead as he felt himself getting slightly sick. The nausea was short-lived, however, and Chu Wanning just thought he was tired, so he didn't care. It was late at night, and he finally fell asleep with a frown on his brows. A wide sleeve pillowed on the side of a mountain of case files with a scroll of unfinished slips on top of his lap, the edge of his robe wilting like a wave of water. That night, he had dreams. Unlike ordinary dreams though, this one was vivid and felt real. He is standing in the loyalty hall in Shisheng Peak, but this loyalty hall is different from what he knows. Many details of the furnishings have changed. Before he had time to take a closer look, the doors of the great hall suddenly opened and a crimson mantle billowed. Someone walked in. She's on. The young man has handsome eyebrows and dark, violet eyes, although he was already in the shape of a young man, he looked a little boyish when he curled his mouth. Mo ran. Chu Wanning stood up and was just about to walk over to him when he realized that four chains flowing with spiritual energy were fastened around his feet and wrists, binding him and preventing him from moving. Shocked and then enraged, Chu Wanning stared incredulously at the chains around his ankles for a moment, his face twisted in anger, choking on his words, before he looked up and sternly said, Mo Weiyu, are you rebelling? Untie these for me. That person however, acted as if he had not heard his angry shout, and with a lazy smile on his face and deep dimples, came over and cupped his chin. End chapter